getting your money right, getting your business right, so you're making the most amount of money you can, working as efficiently as you can, having other income streams that are necessarily available, um, having profit share, and then I, I'll tell you, I actually this year, I got paid to be at Keller Williams because we got a bunch of inbound referrals that I can control and I can see and or I was able to send people out that more than paid for everything I paid to Keller Williams. And I was able to, and that, it was hard for me to do it in another brokerage. So that for me was a whole other thing. But then the other thing is then what do you do to create real true lasting wealth? And we, we aren't, we don't have like most, you know, me have an IRA, but we're not putting it into a 401k here, right? People are real estate agents are generally they're doing something with their S corp and they're not doing that. So it's up to us to make sure that we're investing for the future and creating those things. So that, that is really where knowing your money and learning about this and then being able to learn how to invest correctly is probably the most important thing you, you can do. In that, um, uh, so if you, now going back to when I decide, okay, I'm gonna take those, I'm really gonna transition what I'm doing and really make good decisions and really look for good deals and really try to bring this up. So oh, since that time, since the end of 2015 until about now, uh, I've gone from what, seven to 29 units and um, my net worth has gone up by four and a half million dollars. Okay, so, um, and I'm in good positions at this point. Now obviously the market has helped a ton, let's be, let's be honest, right? Um, I'm actually probably under, severely under leveraged at this point with um, only about a 30 to 34% LTV across the board and everything we own, which is uh, probably under leveraged, but it's also super, super safe, okay? Um, but that's really the crux of the matter is what are you doing to create the money that you can then invest to create real wealth and then real passive income? Okay. How many five plus you need to have? How many what? Five plus, like how more than five you need? Oh, do I? So um, I have, a, I currently own a 10 and an 8 plus. Okay. Right, and a fourplex, and I own a couple of duplexes, a couple of single family. I'm actually under contract on something right now too. And I'm actually under contract on a couple of different things right now. Are they all in Utah? Okay, that's um, nice question. <laughs> of, right now of the 29, 25 are in Utah. You but, sold a bunch last year. Yeah, I sold some last year, right? Kind of as the pandemic hit because I was, I didn't, I thought, man, it'd be good to have a lot of some cash on hand. I didn't actually end up paying some taxes. And I'm, uh, so and I, I bought a house here this year and I'm actually under contract right now to buy another townhouse that came to be, I think is a really good deal. It's hard to find the good deals. You need to learn about this. That's a whole other separate thing about all this that I encourage you to start that process. We actually have a class this year we do on that that um, in terms of wealth building and how to really look at that, you, you have a spreadsheet in front of you. That's a spreadsheet I created that I liked it because I wanted, you can look at, there's tons of ROI calculators and everything you can find online and everything else. It told me what I wanted to know, right? So, um, and, and also I realized the numbers in there are not particularly great um, on, on that spreadsheet. I'm now just using running, running example of something, I don't know, whatever. But you can still find deals here. They can be hard. Um, you have to figure out how it's gonna work for you and what you're gonna do. Now, let me, I can, I can run you through the last couple of deals that I, the one I, I closed on that we're right down right now, single family home on Roberta. Um, I paid, uh, it was listed at like 389, I paid 360. I got it, they had a tenant in it who was not really allowed in showings. Um, I put it under contract. If they had cleared that tenant out, um, and just clean that thing up, they probably could have sold it for like 390 like that. Because you know what I mean? Anyway, I picked it up, costs have gone up. I'm gonna spend, I thought I'd put, spend about 40 to 45 on the rehab. I'm actually cutting some egress windows down the bottom, if you're gonna do that, and adding window wells to a couple bedrooms down there. Uh, it'll, so I'm gonna spend about 60, which is a lot more than I thought, but. Um, it's worth every more than you should have paid. Yeah, but I think it'll be worth 470 when I'm done, okay? I, I bought it with a 10% down for MACU. You do have the two, two loans right now again, now with MACU with 10% down. Um, so uh, so I got my upfront cost down on that. We've decided we're gonna turn that into an Airbnb. My monthly payment on that is gonna be about 1600. I think we can, we're probably, we think 
we ought to be able to to do uh, four to five thousand a month from that from that house. Where did you say that was? From Roberta. It's in Salt Lake. It's not in Roberta. Okay. Okay. This is right by your fourplex. Tenplex, yeah, it's actually next door. <laughs> <laughs> um, and which is great. It's a win-win because I get to get to control the environment there, make my tenplex look better, make that house look better. Um, and uh, that's all lot. What? Yeah, it'd be great. I'd love to. Um, but I can also rent that house out easily for eighteen hundred a month if I needed to, right? So I didn't buy it just based on an Airbnb. I bought it like if I need to maybe do a regular rental, I can, right? And so I'm safe in that regard. Um, I feel like the return will be good. Right now, I have, I have long-term goals for like the end of next year. I want to hit a certain amount of cash flow per month, and this will help me do that. Um, uh, so I've bought other properties. I tend to a lot of 10 through exchanges. I've done reverse 10 through exchanges. And that's all, we can talk all about that later. Um, but this is really being, I got really focused on this because I realized, okay, this is the next step. Because I started looking at going, okay, well I can make more money, do all these things. <coughs> But there are so many people um, that don't take that money and then do anything worthwhile with it, right? The key was you said, well, if I'm exponentially growing my production and therefore my income, but you didn't say I'm gonna make so much more money, you said I'm going to invest, be able to invest in so many more, more projects. Right. Which is a different mindset shift. It's a little different mindset shift. And uh, you know, when you look at like, um, but the interesting part is like because that incurs that your your or infers that your cost of living and your experience is not going to change as far as your outcome. Right. I mean, so I, I, we don't carry any credit card debt. I live in Draper. Our house is four thousand square feet. Our house is fine. We're remodeling. <coughs> finishing remodels on it. It'll be great. It'll be worth like a million when we're all done. Okay. We don't. I bought a car. I was driving Honda Accord until January this year, and I bought a Tesla. Bought it used though. I paid fifty three thousand. I mean, I, that's that's who I am. Like, I'm not going to pay one hundred and ten for it. But it's a, you know, it's a great car. It gives me what I want. And we go on nice vacations. We do all these things. But we're, I'm very focused on. I want that passive income by the end of next year. Did you pay cash for it, or did you finance it? The car. Appreciate it. I, I pay cash. See, this is this, this is the part of the GCI the why that new agents. It's like. If you're motivated and you want to make money and make all this money and then you don't understand tax strategy and need coaching around that, then you end up blowing well, or, 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 taxes. Or, or they, I mean, there's also, there's like, oh, you know this, there, there's there's some agents and then they, they coach and they coach other agents. And I've even seen, a, there's a coaching company that uh, basically tells people to go get into a bunch of car debt because it will motivate them to go sell real estate, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think that is probably like the stupidest thing I've ever heard. In fact, I feel like it's irresponsible, right? I, I would agree. Right, and there's and there's certain, I mean, there's certain, you know, you drive to certain parking lots and they, they wanna show you what they're about by the car they drive, right? Right, and, but there's and that, also a delicate balance. If you're working with a lot of below degree clientele, you can say all you want. There's a certain expectation that if you're not operating at the same level and you're going to be a consulting them, then there's probably a disconnect. At the same time, you don't, it shouldn't be so bougie that it's not based in reality that you're then offending people who are like, oh my gosh, I'm, this guy's going to make so much money. Da, 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 you know, if you've got a I mean, lower price point. Huh? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I've worked with lots of different people. I, I'm working with more luxury now. I, I don't think that's coincidental. I mean, sorry, I, I do think it's coincidental that I'm now driving a Tesla, so let's be clear about that. But like at the same time, like um, you, you have to be clear on what you're doing and why you're doing it. And, and I really, so we don't have a lot of time to dive into this, but what I, I want you to do is I think you need to make the mindset <laughs> shift that I, why am I, I'm doing all this to make the money and then I'm taking that money and I'm not gonna spend it on a boat. Okay, I'm taking that money and then I'm gonna put it over here and I'm gonna grow an asset, right? An asset. Now, what I love about owning real estate as an asset, as opposed to let's say, um, let's say you can own a real estate brokerage, right? What does a real estate brokerage have that a, that a piece of real estate doesn't have? 
Equity. Yeah, it's got legs, legs. and those yeah. legs can walk away. <laughs> Whereas like an asset in real estate, bought right, managed right, and done right, is a, man, it's a tangible something. It's not a piece of stock, which is not necessarily tangible. It's a tangible piece. It's something that is there and that, you know, if you do it right, I feel like it's, you know, not good, but I feel like it's fairly safe if you do it right, you buy it right. You don't, you buy, you gotta buy stuff that's less than real, retail. You gotta come in, all the stuff I bought has been value add. You create the extra value by doing the work in a cost effective way, right? And then you manage that property. I mean, I've bought properties that other flippers would buy and then just flip, but then I hold it for at least a year and I get long term capital gains treatment and then 10th of exchange out of it. So they might sell it and make $40,000 where I'm going to buy it. I have that $40,000 profit then say, but then I hold it another year. Oh, like lucky me. Now I have like 75,000 in profit and I can now take that 75 and transfer that in a new property with the 10th ring exchange tax free instead of paying, paying taxes over here on 40,000. Does that make sense? It's a good way to accelerate your wealth building as long as you don't need that cash right at that second. So if you're making enough money selling real estate, you don't need it. Did you understand tax strategy or did you put money aside to any council when you first started your first couple of years? Um, I didn't at that point. I mean, I've been setting aside money in, in for taxes out of, out of like the, the S Corp for, for years now in a separate account. You just automatically at every month, you can see I, I funnel that. Then there I have some other rules for money on the other money, but that money is always sitting there. It's in a separate account. Can you my S Corp had no. I take no. I it's S Corp. No, but I got an S Corp back in like 2012, 2013, whatever what it was. So now it's like at the end of every month, that money goes into that tax account. It's a it's a, another account in my S Corp and it just sits there until really? it's needed. It doesn't exist yeah. as far as I can, I'm concerned. Because it's not yours. It's not mine. Now, I've been very fortunate. I've been bought a lot of real estate and everything else, had a lot of depreciation. There's, all, there's a bunch of other things to talk about in terms of that accelerated depreciation. I have never had to use all that tax money. Ever, ever, ever. Right? So then at point, that at point when it comes down, then it becomes my money. Right? Well, these are these are like, you guys gotta take it like one step at a time. First thing is count your money, right? And then figure out what you're doing when you're selling. Are you, are you, what are you doing? Like, are you running a, something that makes sense? Are your expenses in line with what you're doing? Does it make sense? What's next? Okay, great. I'm doing that. Now I got to take what I'm doing, figure out what I'm living on. Am I makes you live with my means? Take the extra and invest it. And you just got to do that over and over and over. But it's crazy. It doesn't take as long as you think to get to a pretty good position. As long as you're consistently doing it. But I see a lot of producers who, who made a ton of money and even taxable make a ton of money, but they don't invest. Right? And uh, you're just summing it up. I, I'm literally looking at this on my screen. And Yogi Berra said, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. And it all comes back, like, on the financial side, any financial advisor you talk to, the very first question is, what is your goal? What do you want your money to do for you? Otherwise, I mean, these amazing, amazing things that Joe is doing, many of us are probably saying, oh, that's such a great idea. I'm gonna model that behavior and stuff like that. But he has said, if you've heard his language a few times, he knows exactly why he's doing it. He's contributing to this product or this service or this horizontal income stream because it's gonna get him to this other place. Well, and here's the crazy part. A lot of people like, a lot of you say something, and you know, a lot of people say, man, you're really disciplined. No, I'm not. I'm not disciplined. You know who's disciplined? Mm -hmm. There's one person in this building that's more disciplined than anyone on the entire planet. His name's William. And he gets results that are unlike anyone else on this entire planet too. Right? But I, I, I'm, I'm certainly not as disciplined as, as he is, but, I, but I'm disciplined enough to make enough good decisions. It's and also say, okay, the world needs us all. We can't all- Well, no, what I'm, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, like, people think I'm, like, super good. Go no, I, I am, but I'm, I'm making enough good decisions, and I, I'm, I'm making enough times, right? How can you make enough good decisions moving forward and figuring out what you're trying to do? Right. Choosing right. between what you want now and what you want most. Yeah, and learning how to delay gratification at least a little bit. Yeah. I, I would love to, to any resources you can share because I mean I take my business very seriously and met with like four or five accounts before I even got my license mm -hmm. like 
issued and we still couldn't get anyone to really give us any sound advice. And then two, three years in, you know, it's like trial and error, which is very expensive, you know, and this past year, very painful. And now it's almost like, you know. Well, I'll tell you this, I, I've got a good accountant. Talk to other, I would say, here's the thing, as you get more advanced in business, and you'll find this, the amount of people you can rely, rely on to, to get advice from becomes a lot smaller. Right, because right? you know more than they do. Well, and I'm not, that's not trying to be like, it's just trying to understand, like we're, we're all trying to move up in our trajectory. We're trying to move up this, right? So be careful who you get advice from, right? I, I would say, make sure you're getting advice and getting coached from people that really know what they're doing, right? It's like, don't go to your, you know, if your parents, like my dad was bankrupt, like what, two or three times? Yeah, I would no. never go to my dad and say, hey, what do you think I should do with this million dollars? Yeah. But you go to a top producer and ask her there, you know, that's what well, I Well, I would say, I mean, I would say, well, what do you want to do? If you're like, hey, I want to figure out where to invest that money. Okay, well, first of all, you need to learn about investing, get great at that. You know, I, I read, I was a professional musician in New York. I read 100 books on real estate in two years. Okay, because I had a lot of time. I was playing this show on Broadway. I read and read and read. Any favorites to throw out as far as books? I mean, just the, of course, like the very beginning one is just learning about how assets work is obviously Rich Dad Poor Dad. It's just the primer. You get into some of his other stuff right now, it goes off the rails, but just as a primer <laughs> of Rich, like what assets are, how to create that, that's a great one. You should, everyone should read that. It's a great, it's a great gift to give the clients, especially for some buyers. I, I yeah. Love that. Um, Gosh, you. Um, and then they can come call you. I, I think, yes. uh, you know what's a great book? I mean, good millionaire real estate investor. Mm -hmm. That's an actually good book. That's advice. a great book. Easily, like, just easy, like, easy peasy. It's got some easy rules in it. Buy under market. Put down 20%. Do it like, you know what I mean? And just, like, follow some easy rules. Um, and, and I think the other thing is you just, you have to, you have to be willing to take action in this arena. Right, this is all, so for us now at this point, this is a whole other business, right? I realized I had to get leverage on this part of my life too. When I got to over 20 units, I was dying, right? So I had to, I had to add leverage in that piece and now we're trying to figure out what that looks like on our, on our team too. What's your average unit that. now? What do you mean, like? Like your volume. On, on real estate sales? Well, for this past month, I think our average commission was like, well, I had one deal that was only 1100 commission because it was a deal I bought instead of it being like 10000 So even with that, then it was still 12000 or something per month. I, but we've been higher than that throughout the year. We've been around like 15 or because I've also done some high, high value deals too. But anyway. So jumping to the action steps since we're at time. Yep. Um, looking at building a more profitable model, action steps would be taking the KPA or if you have a KPA already, making sure to set that KPA review, taking the DISC assessment. This is again intended to make sure you really understand who you are, because as Joe identified, that's gonna be the very first step in building that model. Then from there, there's the career visioning course, which takes you through exactly how to identify those hires, go through the, the hiring process, and make sure it's that hire that's going to generate an extra two deals a, a month, not to cost you time, money, and heartache. Um, and the, the action steps following will come from there. Then looking at that, uh, the idea of evaluating how your money is working for you and holding it accountable, action steps are to create your PNL, find that PNL accountability partner, and have this be a discipline that you are reviewing that every single month. Um, you don't need to even know everything that you're looking for up front. A lot of that will come to you or as you start. Reveal itself. It. Yes. Um, Looking at the, uh, the passive income strategies, identifying where your next or your first passive income source will be, and then setting that passive income goal and strategy for 2022. If nothing else came out of this class, for those of you that are here today, my hope, my wish, would be that when you look at your goals for 2022, it is not just more. And it's not just, oh, this is my transaction count, or this is my GCI goal that your goal is a little more nuanced and that it would be, this is my transaction goal, this is my GCI goal, it's my goal to have this amount of profit 
and this is my goal as far as building passive income, whether that's investing in a passive income strategy, uh, investing in a property, or some combination of both. Um, so identifying both your profit and your wealth goals for one year out, so for 2022, looking at that three year out and then 10 years. I like the three year goal because five years, people tend to get a little bit pie in the sky and you don't feel quite so attached to. Three is tangible enough that you can see how the action steps you take today will get you there. And then 10 connects you to that bigger why. Um, along with that 10 year goal, I think I have over there, know your number. Gary Keller talks about what is your freedom number? What is the number that you would need to have in, um, that you need to have that you could walk away from all of the production, that you could stop what you are doing at this exact moment and be happy forever and ever? Um, doesn't mean you have to stop production. That's something that really kept me from identifying that number for a long time because I am a workhorse and I am worried that if I stopped doing what I was doing, I would very quickly tear everybody around me and myself apart. So <laughs> the idea of working towards a number that would make it so I could retire sounded absolutely horrific to me and I was not interested. What I look at it is not a retirement number, but a freedom number, a number at which point I get to, dis to decide what I do. And I may continue doing exactly what I'm doing, but it has nothing to do with the income. It has purely to do with the fact that I enjoy doing it. That's a slight difference in, in uh, perspective. So it's, like, it's actually a huge difference in perspective. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and be able to identify that and going down that path is, like, is super smart. And a lot of people, I think, are in the same place. They don't want to admit that because if they're, if they're good salespeople, they're like very driven. And they're like, I'm not going to sit there and do nothing. No one says you have to sit there and do nothing. However, what would it feel like? What would it feel like for you if you realize whether you sold a property today or not, you still made $15,000 this month? What if you gave 50% of your time to charity? Yeah. Well, the, but the thing is, because you have you the choice. Yeah. And you know, that's what it's about, even, having the choice. And you don't even have to know what that looks like. So I guess that's the other part is that I, I first, it was just like a hard stop, no, I never want to stop working, that sounds miserable, I don't want to talk about that. Then I got to the place where it was like, well, maybe, if I wasn't stopping working, but what would I do? Could I do this? Could I do that? Maybe I would do that, and I got really lost in the details there. It doesn't right. matter. It's the freedom number. It's the number that at that point, I could look up and say, what do I want to do now? And I would be able to move forward and right. do that. So identifying your freedom number, having those profit and your wealth goals for one, three, and 10 years. And then the last one I have is just ask better questions and elevate your environment. I mean, Joe really um, kind of alluded to that with when you're getting in bigger rooms, when you're getting in rooms with people that are doing more than you, and not just high producers, but people that are actually creating wealth, um, totally then you're able day. to ask questions about, you know, okay, who's your accountant? Who should I talk to? What are the questions that I should be asking them? What are you looking for in your next investment property? What would you do differently? I mean, when we had William speaking on a panel for investing, and he talked about, this is what I did, and here's the mistakes I made, and here's what I'm kicking myself about, and I would do differently. I mean, that's invaluable, and those are the kind of rooms that you want to always be in. So, um, looking at the wealth building series, we did uh, a series of team meetings that were all focused around wealth strategy, we do have those recordings, so if you go to the YouTube channel where team meetings are posted, you can go back in the archives and find those. We will also be continuing to present wealth building strategies through the coming year. This is something that I am very passionate about, is working with agents not just to increase their GCI, not just to increase their businesses in that way, but truly to increase their wealth and to continue to elevate this conversation. So um, attending those, if you are qualified for the more clubs so that is for our producers that are three million plus or the platinum more club which is 10 million plus we have a monthly event um, a lot of those conversations are focused around wealth building and 